Are you worried about making a mistake when operating on the HF bands? When you're getting started in HF, it's unwise to call CQ without the proper etiquette. Many hams get ahead of themselves by trying to jump in and attempt to learn the best practices along the way. But the best way to learn this is with us here at Bridgecom. The first thing you want to pay attention to if you're in voice mode in sideband is if you're using upper or lower sideband. The importance of this is if you're in upper sideband, your center frequency is actually not the cutoff frequency for where you're talking. The frequency that you're talking in is actually up to 3 kilohertz up from where you are on the band. And with the lower sideband, it's 3 kilohertz below you, which is the spacing that you want to maintain between stations. So if you hear somebody up above you, you want to make sure that you're 3 kilohertz below them on upper sideband. If you're on lower sideband, you want to make sure that you're a clean 3 kilohertz above them. And this is to avoid interfering with the other station. So you're tuning around, you found this nice empty frequency, and you're gonna key up and you're gonna call CQ, but wait a minute. First of all, you wanna jump on and you wanna say, is this frequency in use? And you wanna wait for maybe a minute or so. Simply finding an empty frequency and waiting for a minute or so is not enough. You wanna ask, is this frequency in use? Because the last thing you wanna do is key up and come up right in the middle of a conversation. Perhaps there's two parties to that conversation. Perhaps you can hear one party good and strong, but you can't hear the other party. Or suppose one of the parties is long-winded and they're going on and on and on and on for a few minutes like a lot of hams do. You're not gonna hear them, but you're gonna be keying up right in the middle of a conversation if you don't ask if the frequency's in use. A lot of us have automatic antenna tuners. If you have the Zygu G90, which we saw, this has an automatic antenna tuner, has a little push button. The important thing is if you're on top of a net or on top of an occupied frequency, that you go to a nearby frequency that's empty before you tune up your radio. If you use this antenna tuner, people will hear a little hiss or some cracking as the radio tunes up. It's not nearly as annoying as some of the older radios where you have to push down your Morse key and then do the tuning and you hear this loud squeal, but it's still pretty annoying if you're in the middle of a net or a conversation or say somebody's DXing and you happen to hit that tuner. Uh, you could really cause some decent interference doing it, so make sure you tune up your radio on an empty frequency. Oftentimes we'll be dealing with crowded band conditions. We'll be dealing with contesting or contesters, and we'll be dealing with stations stacked one on top of the other. And oftentimes the parameters of the three kilohertz is not going to be observed. In fact, sometimes we're going to be maybe one kilohertz or maybe even half a kilohertz spacing away from one station. Uh, so we're gonna hear some bleed over. Um, and the best thing to do is to take it in stride, and if you hear a little bit of bleed over, maybe delay your response to maybe one of these contesters by maybe a second or two. I know other times people will jump right in and it's difficult to get through, but if you're not gonna make it through, you're not gonna make it through. So you're talking to a friend, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, somebody pops in and asks you to change frequency and asks you to move. It's usually not advantageous to sit there and argue with the person as to the fact that you were there first, because in their mind, they were there first. The band conditions have just changed and voila, your two conversations are merged. You never want to cause malicious interference to another ham operator, so it'd be a good idea just to move maybe five kilohertz or so up the band and uh, resume your conversation there rather than uh, dealing with the individual that's just come up on you. Also, if you're asked by a net to move, which is a large group of ham operators, usually anywhere from about 10 on up to about 50, 60, I've seen logged into a net. It's much easier for you to change frequencies than it is for that net to change frequencies. And while nobody has priority usage of the band, um, it's just best to use some etiquette and um, move versus having 50 or 60 people change frequency. IDing every 10 minutes, it's part of the rules. Once you key up and begin a conversation, make sure you give your identification every 10 minutes. Occasionally you'll hear a ham operator out there who does not give their identification every 10 minutes, or perhaps not at all. If somebody is not giving their ID at all, you can assume that they're not a licensed ham operator. In such cases, you're not allowed to communicate with said individual if you do not believe them to be an active ham operator. Not only is that part of the FCC rules, but you really don't want to encourage unlicensed operation by communicating with it. 
When you upgrade from your tech ticket to your general ticket, before you receive your license in the mail, you're supposed to say your call sign, and then you're supposed to say the designator AG after your call sign, which means you're advancing to general. A lot of times a tech class operator will forget the AG when they first get their license and they're all excited and they're out there talking. Usually the best way to approach this, if you hear somebody on the air and you look them up on QRZ and they don't have an appropriate license, it's to simply say, congratulations on the upgrade. Seriously, congratulations on the upgrade. First of all, if they don't have the upgrade, they're gonna think twice, they'd be like, oh, wait a minute, I need an upgrade to be on this band? But secondly, they probably already have the upgrade. They probably just forgot the AG or the designator. So in a few days, you'll probably look online and you'll probably see that, yes, in fact, they do belong on the band. Also, if you're a general class ham operator, know and memorize your band limitations. In fact, it's best to print out a copy of your general class privileges and hang it on the wall, especially if you're new to the hobby next to your radio, so that you know where the band edges are. And also keep in mind, based on sideband as well, which we covered earlier, that you have to be a full three kilohertz from the edge of the band with respect to upper and lower sideband and band edges, otherwise you'll bleed over outside of your band. Do you have more questions about HF radio etiquette that we didn't cover today? Let us know below in the comments. Thank you for watching and 73.